It's been 18 months since anyone in an orange jersey won an Athletes Unlimited volleyball match. It's been three days since Captain Morgan Hentz navigated her team to a 3-0 record. Does Team Hentz hoist the orange sails and plot a course to victory? Or does Team Hilly keep the women in orange feeling blue? Week three of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball docks in port right now. Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN, presented by Nike. We once again have you in the Sonoran Desert, the land of beautiful sunsets and professional volleyball in the United States. Team Hence taking on Team Hilly begins our Friday. Welcome inside, everyone. I'm Kevin Barnett alongside a pair of Olympians tonight, Holly McPeak alongside Key Michael later. Holly, we're about 40% of the way through this season. What do we know? Well, three takeaways so far. One, Leah Edmond came back fit and ready to compete. Two, Morgan Hentz is pretty darn special. In her first contact, she makes spectacular digs, but it's the quality of those digs that allows her team to attack back. And then third, Claire Chasse is something special. Just a rookie, but she has made her mark, been the top pick twice. Yeah, Morgan Hentz, you mentioned her on defense, nothing short of superlative. Love it. I mean, 100 digs for her already. But today, she is in orange, and that has been an unlucky color. So let's see if she can keep her team in system with those spectacular digs so they're able to score and win and break that orange curse. An orange curse indeed, but Team Hens, perfect on the weekend last weekend. On the other side for Team Hilly, it's been a consistent connection of Badgers. And I like these two together, Sydney Hilly and Danielle Hart. They have that good setter middle blocker connection, not only offensively, but defensively and as well. And it's a nice combination to build your team around. From that combination, they will look to some offense from the opposite position. For Willow Johnson, it was a revelation in week one. Week two, more challenges. Well, Willow Johnson proved she can score the ball. She had some tough matchups last week, but I think she'll make a big difference for Hilly this weekend. So Willow Johnson, the left-hander, fourth in the league, 79 kills. And she's leading the opposites with some defense. So a lot of talent on both of these sides. And now some consistent combinations as the league starts to take shape. First serve is underway. And it's defense for the women in orange. Hence, with the overhead bump set. Another tough swing on the outside here. And the block will find it. Boyasso next to Ali Bastianelli, one of the top blockers in AU history, number 55 in orange. Bastianelli is, has a big presence defensively in the net for team hence in orange, and she's going to have a big effect on this game. If you're new to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball, we're going to play three sets. There are team win points awarded for each set, 40 of them. You get 60 for the overall, and the overall is one on aggregate. So it's every point you score, I'll add it up throughout the three sets into one score at the end. The ball's tipped and touched. Pancake is good. Hence again, bump set back overhead. That ball is just long. Blue is struggling to stay in system. They need to take care of that first contact. A couple tips to start this match. Emma Willis back to serve, gets the start at middle blocker. Willis scoring a ton of points this year. Been on the winning side for the first two weeks. Good touch by Hart. In transition, a little bit too far. Second time through. Both teams generating opportunities early. Defense from Hilly. There's Johnson who's blocked right back into her arm. This is how our league it lays out. 44 world-class athletes across four teams. Never the same combination twice. New teams are drafted every Tuesday by captains. The captains are determined by the top four players on our leaderboard. And that leaderboard is taken care of by their scoring system. It's all individual points, but your team success matters most as that ball eventually finds the floor off the service of Team Hens. And Team Hens has come out serving very aggressive, been able to get Team Hilly in all sorts of trouble. Look at this serve from Lindsay Vanderweider. Drops in front of Kendall White on that sideline. Better pass this time overhead to Johnson in rhythm, and she collects the kill. 
Our leaderboard on the left-hand side, you see they're scrolling. That will update live as people earn points. You notice that Bethany De La Cruz is white. We don't have a team in white. She is inactive this week, recalled to the national team to compete in the Pan American Games. So our current leader will be out of town. She will receive the lowest amount of win points earned by any team on the weekend. So if someone wins no sets, she will get no points as that ball is tipped over the top by Coyasso. It's a good opportunity for the rest of the players to pass her up or at least catch up. Yeah, cut into that lead built by our current reigning champion in Bethania de la Cruz. Lots of new talent in the league this year. If you're just tuning in with us here in week three, Bastianelli, one of the AU stalwarts for her third season now. Backslide, Hart straight down the line. There is the Hilly Hart connection we talked about. Hilly knows exactly where Danielle Hart, number three in blue, wants the ball, and they are so effective together. The Hilly Hart connection is different than the Hart and Chausse connection. It is. Talk. We'll talk about that later. That one thrown to Molly McCage. All middles wear the number five for the women in orange. McCage can't quite get to that second contact. Mentioned a little bit about the scoring and how it all works. About 60% of your total points should come from your team's success. 40 for each set, 60 for the overall win. Your individual stats are going to be about 36%, and you can get negative points for a variety of things. And there's also the MVP points voted by everyone on the court after each match, as well as by you, the fan, if you're a member of the Unlimited Club. Bump set to Lukes, who rolls it. Good opportunity here for Team Hens. And the cage converts. And just comparing the start of this first set, Team Hens in orange, their first contact and the quality of the digs have been much better than Team Hilly, and that's why they're in system and hitting for higher numbers. And this is Coyasso back to serve, another national team athlete from Puerto Rico. A lot of international talent in this league. Tough serve back to the back line. The cage all alone has that one go underneath her hands. So important as a middle blocker, actually any blocker to be over the net, not going up and then over, just slide those hands over so that does not come on your side of the net. Molly McCage back to being a professional player, playing the league the last couple of years, said I miss playing full time. Well, she's gonna make that her career once again. She is done with all the real world stuff. All about volleyball once again. Nice kill on the outside, sweet tempo to Linehan. Yeah, the tempo is really important. Get it there quick and fast, but in a good location that Allie Linehan can attack through the seam of the block. Allie Linehan's been through an excellent weekend and a very challenging weekend in back-to-back -back Athletes Unlimited competition dates. We play on Friday, Sunday, and Monday. Glad you're joining us here on your Friday night. That ball is not touched by the block, and it's wide right. Team Hilly trying to attack the smaller blocker on the court for Team Hence. Nutsara, number 13 in orange. She's a smaller block, so you want that matchup hitter attacking the small block. Hence with the early two-point lead. Play to 25, win by two. All right, blast from Willow Johnson. Increased power from Willow in this season. I, I agree. I think she came back really strong and healthy, and you can tell with the range that she's hitting the ball. That time she had a really well-formed block in front of her and still able to work it inside. Willow Johnson comes in hitting 235 after a torrid week one. And Molly McCage collects the kill there. And credit Lindsay Vanderweide with the perfect pass, allowing her setter to get that ball to McCage. Yeah, Molly McCage hitting 414 has been a picture of consistency. Number five there in orange. 17th in the league in total points. Chance for an assist. Not yet. That ball will be handled by the team in blue. Block covered by White. Tip to the middle, not this time. Vandewada. Heavy connection to the back line. Watch this block by Bastianelli. A little cover play and then a dump set. Nussar pushing that ball out to Lindsay Vanderweider who finds that corner open. Team Hens the aggressor. A little 9-6 here in the first set. 
Perfect pass in transition. That one is too close. Net violation negates it anyway. And another point for Team Hens. If you're Hilly, are you thinking about a timeout? Yeah, I, it, it's me. Yeah, it may be one more play, but you want to stop the momentum for Team Hens. Three in a row. Letting it ride, Captain Sidney Hilly. Ball into the net, so timeout saved. Yes. Good job, Coach. That's important. You wait one more point just in case. Captain McPeak says. Thank you. We'll wait one more. In comes Gabby Blossom. Four years at Penn State and then a little a trip out west for, you know, a national semifinal with USD. Tough serve there. Working on Vanderweide. Bastianelli as Team Hens continues to make the middle of the weapon. Really impressive connection, but that first contact is allowing Team Hens to run the quick attack to the middles. And Ali, Basti Ali Bastianelli, the recipient there. Mary's a Michigan native and black belt. Note to self, do not antagonize I number 55. That. I love that nugget. I will, I will buy her coffee instead of bothering her. <laughs> Right back at you, Emma Willis. Connection there, Hilly to Willis. Those high percentage attacks out of the middle are really important. You want to establish them, and then it helps free up your offense on the pins. Emma Willis, one of those players whose stock has been rising, number 23 on the leaderboard to start out. Now number 12. Six matches in. That's to the back line, Danielle Hart. And that will keep Willis at the service line. And Sydney Hilly is really good at feeding Danielle Hart high and fast, and that's what she requires to hit over the block. Danielle Hart was questionable coming in. Good to see her out here performing in set one. That's going to be a trickle ace. Willis is going to pick up the points, and those are big. Every ace is plus 12. And for every ace during this season, Aspiration is committed to planting trees. The Aspiration Aces program in effect. Heading into this week, 700 trees have been committed thanks to Aspiration support and make it 710. Thank you, Emma Willis. <laughs> Off the block, out of bounds. They get out of row one with Hennessy's Palazzo and Hill. I like the palindrome number, 77 and 55. Love that the number rules have been loosened up in the sport of volleyball. Yeah, I like it too. And they've gotten rid of collars. Now it's been a few years. Collars and sleeves. Yeah, you played in collars <laughs> all your entire and, career. And sleeves. Yeah. Some of the sleeves are making a comeback. And pants. I couldn't play in pants and sleeves. No, too much. No. Willow Johnson with the kill there. So Johnson off to an outstanding start. Decent pass, Bastianelli found by Tomcom. Linehan, ahead of steam. Reset once again. Second big swing finds the Terraflex. Ali Linehan attacking that seam between Nunaviller and White, and White and Brooke Nunaviller talking about the location and who needs to cut that ball off. Important, you're playing defense next to a player you haven't been playing with. These teams reconstituted every Tuesday. They have a few days to get to know one another and then play Friday night. So McCage back to the front row. Bastianelli at the line. Good flat serve. Left to Nunaville. Look at the stab by Alley. Bastianelli with the pickup with the left hand. Will it pay? No, just inside the right hand of Molly McCage. And Willow Johnson out of the back row in transition. She has started hot tonight. And is it a plan to get, get her going Definitely. early in this match? Definitely. Okay. She's proven she can score, and they want to get her going. She struggled last week, but started really strong week one. Johnson with the defense there, dug over. One more time. Also, more good defense from Team Hilly. Luke's. Now, one of the questions I have for Team Hilly is the difference in their two outside hitters. Very different 
tempos and shape from Hilly for Luke's and for Nunaville. I agree, but Sydney Hilly's the type of setter who could deliver whatever her hitter needs and requires. How would you contrast what each player needs on the outside as Nunaville steps back to serve? Usually it's pace. Uh, some hitters like a little more height to get on top of it, allowing them to get their feet to the ball. I think Luke's is a little bit better when it's higher. But that, that's something you work out prior to match day. One on one, there's a winner and a big point add. That'll be for the stuff block. 12 points for Allie Linehan. Little roll shot, what a beautiful pancake. And then Allie Linehan gets back up, solo block on Willow Johnson for Team Hens. So give you an idea what happened there on our leaderboard. That's 17 points for Allie Linehan. She had five for the dig, 12 for the solo stuff block. Our point total is constantly updating on the leaderboard. That one hit through the small block of TomCom. Do you go right back out there? Yes, you do. Luke's dug again. Linehan. Roll shot. A diving white picks it up. One more time to 37. Really impressive defense, both sides of the net, but Team Hence relentless in Linehan. Really nice start for her in this first set. Team Hentz been hanging on to a few point lead throughout this first set. And Team Hilly hasn't let him get away. We're at the technical timeout in set one. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Nike. And by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. Doug again by Hens, who's under it. Morgan Hens with the play of the rally. Growing up, I mostly played outside hitter. And then making the transition to college, I was a little bit undersized as an outside. And so some of my coaches asked me to transition over to being a libero. And at first, it was actually really hard. I was like, I want to hit. I want to score points. Um, but as I talked with coaches and other teammates, they're like, you can find ways to still be involved in the offense, calling shots for your hitters, covering your hitters. And what I love most about being a libero is just the heart and the grit in the position. And it's something that every position definitely has, but I feel like the libero has it maybe the best. <laughs> Welcome back to Athletes Unlimited. We are halfway through the scrap down between Hens and Hilly. It's going to be a fantastic match. We had no doubt it was last week, but let's talk draft. I spoke to both these two players before the matches, and they have two very different strategies. Interesting. So Hens, a libero, chose first an outside hitter. No surprise there. Three of the four captains did except Leia. But then she chose two middle blockers, and she told me she wants a really scrappy, defense-minded, gritty team, two big blockers to help her do that. She has only one returning player from last week. That's Lindsay Vandervita. But Hilly on the other side has a very specific strategy. Outside, opposite, middle, outside, middle. She waits till the very end to take her libero or another setter. And I think that's going to pay off for her today. Constructing your team is one of the many challenges a captain faces. They're also in charge of everything throughout the week, the whole schedule. Oh, I didn't know that. When to practice, if you're going to practice, 
who's where, what the drills are. Captain has the final say on all of it. That ball over the top of Tomcom for the kill. Who's in the starting lineup? Exactly. That's a tough choice. And I know we talked to one of the athletes today who said, if I'm a captain, that's going to be tough for me. I, I like when people like me. If you don't start or play anybody, there could be some friction there. <laughs> it's a little challenging. Key Michael will be roaming the sidelines for us, diving in, getting into the huddles, getting us the info. She's an Olympian in 2012. Holly McPeak, also an Olympian, sitting next to me. I'm Kevin Barnett. Glad you're with us here for a Friday night of volleyball. As that ball is put over the top by Tom Com. She'll collect the kill herself. Early offensive stars, Willow Johnson for Team Hilly, wearing the blue jerseys, four of eight, and Allie Lenahan, three of seven for Team Hens. Tom Com there at the net, front row setter. She can attack that ball. Team Hilly, not ready for that one. Taylor Bruns taking root, who's in. Misses that connection with Molly McCage. The one point given back to Team Hilly gives us a, a chance to bring in Simone Abbott. Hi, Simone. Hi, Kevin. Simone, tell me about Team Hence this week. What have you guys been all about? What's been the notable vibe over there? Team Hens is, um, I don't know, like very professional and structured and like not too serious, but like serious. We like focus and take care of business. And I think Morgan is the one that starts that and it trickles down because she has all this professional experience. So yeah, I'd say just super focused and professional. Has defense yeah. been the top of her priority list? I mean, yeah, always, yeah. <laughs> There's never a Love time that, where it's not. <laughs> yeah. I always wonder how different gyms affect a player and what they do. It, hence, a lot of time in the USA gym, so you get a little bit of that system. But you've seen a number of different gyms. What What do you like in a practice atmosphere? What's beneficial for you? Um, probably just having a bunch of girls that care just as much as I do. Um, you can be in different places and have different levels of, uh, what's the word? investment and here I think everyone's super super invested so it only it makes you bring your level higher because you know everybody else cares so much about theirs and your level. Now I know you're working hard in the gym but here we're in a new city this year I know a lot of the athletes have mentioned trying to get to know the city or things to do in downtime what's good for you off the court that sets you up for success on the court? Mm, probably just going outside I think going outside and just looking at the sky is something that I love to do and you're, it gets you out of this gym and gives you perspective about how big the world is and how small a part of it this competition is. So yeah, definitely that. Have you gone on any hikes or seen any of the sites? No, I'm not a hiker, okay. I'm not an outdoor <laughs> person. No, <laughs> okay. I like to just do nothing in my off time, but it, I'll, I'll do nothing outside. Okay, do that. best movie you've watched while you've been here? Ooh. Gotta be sci-fi, right? Has to be. Mm -hmm. No, it's probably like a comfort movie. Um, probably like Waiting to Exhale or When Harry Met Sally. Wow. I watched both of those for the first time here, uh, and it was good. Oh, also, this is important about our team. Uh, Orange has had a, like a not a good streak th for this, right. this time. I think Orange is literally 6-0-6. Six, oh six. Um, so our color is green now, and <laughs> we <Okay>. are... <laughs> We are the green saguaros. Saguaros is a, a cactus that's native to like this land. Nice. Um, so we're the green saguaros, and then we our cheer is green saguaros, and we like do a cactus pose. Okay, Simone Abbott, you're on the home side. Then thanks for spending time with us. Thank you. Bye. The green saguaros. Okay. It's a mindset. It is. Yeah, I'm all for being on a green team. Yeah. Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, count Your me team. in. Yeah, that is my squad. I would like to see a green team out here. I'm all for yeah, that. Yeah, where's the green? Well, the question is, where is Team Hilly going to go right now? They're in a rotation in which they scored with Willis at the line. They need a couple here to close the gap on Hens. As Hens is within five, that one just wide. Good communication that time by the receivers. Whose job is it to control the receive? Well, we'll talk about for Team Hens, it's Morgan Hens. She is the captain of the defense and serve receive. Usually, it's the Libero. Okay. Oh, Team Hens picking up another one there. So extending their lead off the ace, Lindsey Vanderweide. That's her second ace so far in this first set. And she's serving that seam. Kendall White, when she was at Penn State, she passed with only two serve receivers her entire career, the entire court. That's not easy to do. 
Another one right down the middle. Working on Lukes. That ball just out. Vanderwater wanted it back. Had a good beat on where to be, but a little too much power. Brooke Nunneville hitting that ball off the pin at her former teammate from Oregon. Vanderwater there just can't control it. Duck on duck crime. Yep. Oh, nice turn, Koyaso. Koyaso flat off the hands. Nutsara Tomcom delivering a really nice set. I like the way she locates the ball. An efficient first set here from Team Hens. They have carried a lead now at five, their largest. But it has been mostly two points. They've hung on to it. Bastianelli with a dig. Looking for plus six and a chance to put it away. Oh, and over out of the back row will give it to him. The lead six for Hens, but more importantly, looking to close this first set and get 40 team points. And Katie Lukes was attacking out of the back row. She's not allowed to step on that three meter line, and she did. Set point number one, Bastinelli. Hard, flat. Where did that ball go? Just underneath Molly McCage. There's been a couple of those in this first set. There's been three already, and Molly McCage is mad at herself. She just needs to make sure she is over. She's talking to Nutsara Tom come about it very angrily. Yeah, she's yeah. mad at herself. Third chance here for Team Hens. X1 winner. Linehan plays a huge role in the first set, 25-19. And she comes in and hits that gap ball off the left sideline. Let's watch the last point. Ellie Linehan, perfect pass, comes inside and attacks that gap between the right side blocker and the middle blocker for Team Hilly. A little bit of variation in the offense. We mentioned the streak that it has been for women clad in orange. They lost nine matches in a row, dating back more than a year and a half. But they win the first set here. Team Hens continues their role. They lead 25-19. Set two coming up. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel.
you shut that down just hit the ball harder. Or have Sydney Hilly as your setter. Oh, the set right here from Sydney Hilly. When I started out, I was the youngest on my team. I was one of the shorter ones. So the coach was like, yeah, you're not going to be a hitter. You're going to be a setter. So pretty much since the beginning, I've been a setter. And I love it because you're so involved in the game. You should be touching the ball every time the ball comes to your side of the net. And you kind of get to be the quarterback of the offense. There's a lot of IQ that goes into it, strategy that goes into it. And I have a very analytical brain. Um, so I think that part works out nicely for my position. Another solid start for Team Heads, 25-19 in that first. Their whole side picks up 40 win points for every player. Team Hilly looking to rally on their side, but the final play of that set had some interesting offense. It certainly did. Team Hilly served this ball. And Allie Linehan steps in, but she doesn't go all the way outside. Sydney Hilly, the right side blocker, takes her eyes off the play, and Allie Linehan able to score inside. Now, normally a left side attacker all the way to the pin. Usually they work all the way outside, giving themselves enough room to really use the whole court offensively. Hence did an outstanding job of using the whole offense there, Team Hence. Four kills for Linehan, hit 440. So a nice start to the efficiency for her. Just four attempts for Lindsay Vandewide, one kill there. They did get the ball to the opposite quite a bit. Four kills for Payaso as well. You now, Allie Linehan, big on the first night of week one, week two, a little bit of a struggle, but here, smooth. I think she's been really excellent in system right there. And then here's an out of system ball off the set from Hens. They're keeping her fast, pushing the pace, and she is quick off the floor to attack through the seams of the block for Team Hens. Allie Linehan started first position after week one, first position again. Then she fell all the way to 12th, leading into Monday of last week. Came in at 11th. So she's been down. She's got to get back on the climb. Yeah, maybe she doesn't like being a captain. Some don't. <laughs> some don't. It's a big responsibility. I think some of it's just getting used to the way that the whole system works. One of the things that Tania De La Cruz does is she's just efficient. Yeah. She doesn't miss plays. She doesn't give herself negative points. Well, there's a way to give yourself positive points. Brooke Nunaviller starts his second set with an ace and a plus 12. Brooke Nunaviller hits this ball flat, clips the tape, and fortunate drop for Team Hilly. If you can serve the cable every time, there's a big contract waiting for you. <laughs> now going deep. Perfect pass, Vanderweide. And a missed tip connection from Bastinelli. Nutsara Tomcom, the setter for Team Hens and Elia. Bastianelli talking about that miscommunication on the set they wanted to run. Remember to watch that overall score. That's the big one, 25-21. Team Hilly, 2-0 here. Looking for three. There it is in transition. Danielle Hart gives us a chance to bring in Olympian Key Michael. Well, we talked about orange being cursed, but I don't think that's always going to be the case. Have a look at those shoes that Coach Rubio is wearing. He's leaning into it. And if you're wondering where he got them, Molly McCage just happened to be wearing them on her walk-in photos today and said, hey, Coach, I think you need a little extra swag today for Team Orange. I love that Dave and Molly have the same that, size shoes. That's shoe. my first thought. <laughs> but those, those shoes are hot. Wow. Yeah, I'm kind of wishing McCage wore 15s. Right? And she could style me. I, I I need to go to see Amanda Benson. That's what I need. I need to be styled by Amanda. Style? Yeah. Thank you, Key. Backline kill from Hart once again as early on the middle becomes a threat for Hilly 4-1. Sydney Hilly so confident in getting the ball to Danielle Hart. And Danielle Hart is so long. She's got a huge offensive window. So ideal if the setter wants to get her the ball in any situation. Oh, hence bad pass. Cannot be saved. Scoring from the service line, Team Hilly. And that's not a phrase you're going to say very often. Hence bad pass. But that one got away from her. Credit Danielle Hart for putting some extra special something on that one. Special something? What, like, yeah, is that like, like a spitball yeah, or something? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. A little a extra <laughs> spicy mustard on it or something. <laughs> 
There's another spicy mustard. Yep. Nice snap. Coyasso. Coyasso. Team Hens was a little bit out of system. Set came from off the net, but nice high swing to that corner, catching Hart high. I mentioned the Unlimited Club earlier. That allows you to vote in the MVP after each match. And you also, if you become a Unlimited Club gold member, you can get a gold box, and it includes a jersey and a Morgan Hens bobblehead. We, we're members of the gold. We are. Yeah. I can't wait to take mine home. Look at that. we got a gold box. Limited quantities available, and I'll tell you, it's minus two right now because uh, we have two Morgan Hens bobbleheads finally. There she is. I just want to see Morgan Hens with Morgan Hens. Just, Let's. Just bobbing along. <laughs> We're having some fun here. Hopefully you are, too, on a Friday night. A volleyball from Mesa, Arizona. Kevin Barnett alongside a pair of Olympians on the peak and key Michael. That ball dug up, but a net violation going to take it away. Brooke Nunaviller for Team Hilly doing a really nice job reading that play defensively. Katie Luke saying that she did not think she hit the net, and Sydney Hilly is going to make a challenge. A couple of captain's challenges in each set. So we will have our first challenge of the night. You can challenge net context, ball in or out, ball down or not. Captain has to call again. Captain's in charge of everything. They make all the decisions. Right now it is Team Hilly carrying that lead, currently reading 6-3. Holly McPeak, what do you see here? Well, Katie Lukes is the blocker on the left side. Looks like her on her press, she might have got a piece of the net. This is a perfect angle to watch this from. Yep, guilty. That's what happens when we wear those armbands with the long sleeves. That's what happens? Is well, you, you just don't know. Oh, you can't feel it? Yeah. Okay. I never wear those, did you? No. It's a I, new thing. I could not wear long sleeves. I know. Well, yeah. we were forced to wear long sleeves. And buns? And buns, yeah. And turtle shells? Yeah. Yeah. What They're a look. On our knees, not as shin guards like right. we do now. <laughs> right. Everyone wears shin guards now. It's true. Witness Ali Bastianelli, shin guards, and high socks. Uniforms now far better than before. Uh, the campfire, same as it's always been. And Emma Willis was in trouble. The ball was pushed to her left side, but she makes an athletic play, putting it right in the middle behind the middle blocker. Now look at our live leaderboard, Morgan Hentz. At the number two spot, you notice Linehan climbing into the top ten. She did all that work in the first set, putting herself immediately up that leaderboard. Hence with the dig. No, White. Blown up down the line. Bump set now from Kendall White. And a net violation, I believe, on Team Hence. I think we're going to see a challenge here. We should. Yeah, I thought I saw a net violation as well, but Team Hilly not challenging. No, no look at it at all. Willow Johnson in transition. Maybe not. It matters not. The next play has been run. And it's a kill. Nice pass by Sasa, who's checked in, speaking of Olympians. And Emma Willis doing a lot of work with her feet to get in position. Look at her again, attacking that gap. Molly McCage not all the way out there, and she's able to score cross body. Vandewey, a good pass. Pace to the outside, Lenahan. Sasa with the dig. That's been said a million and a half times over the last decade plus. Willis with the dig. Middles playing D. Linehan looking for the deep corner, no. Just into the black. How about Emma Willis playing some defense for Team Hilly? Middle blockers playing left back. Here's a dump over. Morgan Hentz all over that. And then Linehan comes in again, tries to push this deep line. Missing it long. Johnson trying to go sharp inside and successful. Willow Johnson has fantastic range for Team Hilly, number 44 in blue. 
She hit that inside the defense, inside the three meter line. Team Hilly has responded after that first set defeat. They are now up 10 to four in this set. More importantly, it is tied at 29 in the overall. Team Hilly responding to the pressure from Hens. Timeout, Team Hens, Sydney Hilly taking over. There's power in my voice. When I use it. To speak up for a cause. To encourage the person next to me. To help us hear the voiceless. To represent my people. To shine a light on the truth. To show others what is possible. To change the course of history. To remind you of the power in yours. There is power in your voice, but only when you use it. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Welcome back to week three of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball here on ESPN. My name is Key Michael, and I've been hanging out in the merch shop looking in particular at these replica jerseys. And if you want to get one for yourself, go over to shop.auprosports.com. You can style yourself as Team Hilly has styled themselves in this second set. Leading 10-4, strength of Emma Willis. Multiple efforts here. Well, it's the defense being played by Team Hilly. Watch this here. First, it's Sasa with the dig from deep middle, and then a free ball to Team Hens. And watch Emma Willis, left back defender. She's a middle blocker, but shown she has back row skills too, and then forcing Team Hens to hit that ball long. Emma Willis, a spacecraft test engineer. I love that. Getting cargo to the International Space Station. Incredible. Uh, what are you doing in your free time, Holly? Unimaginable. <laughs> I, I don't, nothing important. <laughs> Getting my son to school. Helping him with his homework. You, you are transporting Im important and precious cargo. True. Same business. Same, same. Same. Hence, another diving dig. Linehan. A little recycling pays off with a net violation. And both players, Johnson, alongside Hart, say it wasn't me. Was it my jersey is what Willa Johnson is asking now. I mean, that happened right in front of us, and I did not see any net contact. No challenge there. Sydney Hilly watched the replay on the big screen and is now asking for a challenge. Well, that's going to be another captain's challenge. Team Hilly lost the first one, so they didn't net when, in fact, they did. Let's see what happens on this one. I wonder with the challenges, too, it's always a balance to me. Do you want to stop the play? You're leading 10-5. Do you care enough to stop the play? Well, it's an important point. I mean, against a team like Hens, do you want to give up a point ever? I don't think so. Yeah, but do you want to stand around for five minutes? What do you think there, Holly? What do you I, see? I do not see net contact, but I'll tell you one thing. Willow Johnson is way over the net. Guys, I gotta add my two cents here. I think Willow was in the net. I think she caught it on the way down. Is that what you're seeing? No. <laughs> I mean, uh, Willow oh, Johnson was way over on, on Team Hens' side of the net. I like that as a blocker, but I did not see any net contact. We have Hens versus Hilly. Now we have McPeak versus Michael. Yeah, I'm let's liking go. This. Ah, they're right 
there. No. You don't see the net moving. I don't. Now it's on. We got to keep score and see which way it goes. Hey, Key Michael, we don't have a 65-inch TV in the the VIP room where you're hanging out right now. Okay. We have a smaller view. I mean, the referee saw something. All right. As called. 1-0 to Key. Okay. Are we scoring this on aggregate? Is it going to go on all weekend? It might. Okay. So 10-5. Team Hilly, five on Team Hens. Oh, a little inside step. Another unusual offensive round. Yeah, but that connection, that comfortability together between Hart and Hilly. Neneviller delivers that great pass, and then look at that crossbody swing by Danielle Hart. One-on-one -on -one in the middle. That's a high percentage play. For Team Hilly. Hitting that one by Blake Moeller, who's in. The one time Purdue standout. <laughs> McCage. A little carnival duck shot to Sasan. Molly McCage finally gets on top of that one. Important transition for Team Hens. Team Hence looking for a little momentum. We're looking for Key Michael. Well, I was listening into the orange timeout as I tend to do these days, and I noticed that they were talking about getting the middle more involved, specifically Ali Bastianelli on that slide, but also Molly McCage. So you're going to see that as part of this orange offense going forward when they have a good pass, getting that middle running. Key, how excited are you about middles getting opportunities and playing defense and stuff in this match so far? Well, look, that was the most exciting McCage part. McCage right on top. All right, perfect timing. Well, wow, she's an awesome player all around, but I think that's why Hence dropped at her, right? I asked her, why'd you get two middles early days? She said, that's why, defense. All right, Key Michael, one-time middle blocker for Team GB back in 2012. They hosted the London Olympic Games. One of the benefits of having Willow Johnson on your team is the ability to attack out of the back row. Here's a cover play. Brooke Nunneville is out of it because she's picked up that short ball and did not have a good approach to be an attacker. The thing I've noticed with Willow, she doesn't need as much of a run up as she used to. She can generate power with just a step and a half or two steps. There's no touches called, no net detected this time, and that ball will be called long. What a difference a set makes. Team Hens was all over dominating the first set, and now Team Hilly has responded. Excellent point by you, Holly. Orange, the orange side never trailed in the first set. Team Hens victorious in set one. They won 25-19. They have not led here in this second set as Team Hens issues a captain's challenge now regarding that last play. We once again give Holly a look and Key is watching on the 80-inch big screen. Looked like that ball hit the left hand of the outside blocker. Our crew saying they're looking for a touch on that final attack by Lindsay Vanderweide. I like the net cam for these touches. Ooh. What do you think, Kevin Barnett? It almost looks like Hilly's hands are flat for a second. And then as she reaches over, it's already past her. I don't see a pointer finger on the right hand, which is where I think the ball passes, going, getting bent back. I do not either. I don't see anything there. Key? No touch. No touch. I mean, I can explain to you why, but I think it's pretty much exactly the same thing no, you're I saying did, here. I didn't see a touch on the replay. Oh, either. so we're all in If you guys agree, okay. it's no I'm fun. Sorry, I'm sorry. But well, how yeah. are we supposed to score it? <laughs> okay, well. Well, time. probably all three of us will be wrong. Yeah, right. Great. It's like it's like Angel City FC, who's seven, seven, and seven. How can you have seven ties? It's too many. We might yeah. have a tie, or you guys could both get negative points here. We'll see. It might be minus twelve for an incorrectly Before called. Wrong. Okay. We're gonna keep play. scoring. Someone's gonna be a captain and start drafting for the next broadcast. <laughs> We're gonna add up all the points at the end of this. I'll tell you what. Keep your eye on the match score here. It is now 32-31 in that overall. And the call will stand. Re referees have been right a lot this evening. Hi, Maria Schlegel. Hello. How goes it over there with Team Hilly? What happened to you guys 
on the side switch, a totally different club in this second set. Yeah, I, I'm happy. <laughs> the first set, I think it was just like we didn't um, we didn't connect maybe good, or we didn't come like with the same attitude that we come in the second one, like spirit wise. I think the second uh, set is working much better. Like connection between uh, Sydney and Dan is really good, and I think now passing is good. Also. The, uh, when Sasa came in, was great. So I think now we're finding a little bit more our balance. And let's see. Now we got a big wall from Ali, but okay. <laughs> what kind of things did you want to focus in coming into the second set after losing the first? Um, I think the first set was a little bit bad in our side of uh, passing and serving. They they won our that battle right now in the first set, and I think that was our goal to change in the second. And uh, okay, under now was was good. Let's see how we keep going. I jinx it. Okay. <laughs> Maria, I know you've had a, a ton of different professional experiences, and now playing in the United States, there's always different systems, different regularities, things about playing in a particular country. What have you noticed about being here surrounded by American players? Uh, it's definitely challenging. It's different, uh, but I like it. It's um, I've been playing in different countries. I play in Italy, Czech Republic, Germany, but that was like more regular volleyball and this is like a new experience because there's new rules and there's like different uh, system of pointing but I really like it and I think it's a uh, it's nice to it's a nice and great to be to have the chance to be here so I'm really happy thanks Maria good luck in the rest of this set thank you guys what a blocking display from team hence Ali Bastianelli just crushing Defense big, at the net. Yeah, big presence at the net. And that kind of defense is what Morgan Hens loves. She wants big blocks in front of her, and she wants to dominate defensively. We have hit a timeout. Team Hilly seeing a rally from Team Hens because of the double nickel. 55 gets Hens the 10. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Second set stands at 13 to 10. Team Hilly with the advantage. And now let's go into the action with their National Guard and Katie Lukes. Here we go, Blue! Come on! Yes! Come on! Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Come on, Tim, go! Good work. Okay. That's Katie. Yeah, I'll touch you on her route here. Brooke, yeah. Put me up. Side, 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 side. Hey! Let's turn it on here. Let's go. Good job. I go into the training room with Katie Lukes. Some cupping's been going on there. A lot of cupping, but she was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year last year. Huge impact leading her. San Diego team to that national semifinal. Huge impact here for Team Hens as they climbed to within two. Key Michael, you were in a huddle? I was in a huddle. I was in the blue. And I was just listening in. And as per usual, Kendall White doing most of the talking, which I love, allow the barrow. But they were talking about when they're out of system, being a little bit smarter on the block. So Team Hens right now has six blocks on them. They want, when they're out of system, go a little higher off the hands, work down the line on the smaller blocker, not get those stuffed blocks anymore. The intimidation of the previous blocks paying dividends there as Team Hens scores another. They now lead in the overall 37-32. Just like that, they are right back into the set. At one point, they trailed 13-6. Six points. 
nearly had the tie there. White, perfect dig. Played overhead for Johnson, who converts to the coffin corner. Willow Johnson in the back row, very effective. Block again was set, but little deflection off the inside hand of Bastianelli for Team Hens. Morgan Hens continues to sit in that number two spot. We're going to see Bedani de la Cruz come off that top slot again, out for the Pan Am Games this weekend. National team duties take precedent here. Hilly, tip coverage. Luke's blocked. Two touches, third is good, and that ball is out. So Hens scores another. In Ali Bastianelli for Team Hens, really anchoring the block. Team Hilly's been out of system in transition and very predictable going to that left pin. For multiple years, Ali Bastianelli has been among the leaders when it comes to solo and total blocks. Another opportunity here. Rayaso free ball. And conversion with the offense of Bastianelli, showing you the complete package. Well, you can see Team Hens really push in the middle every time they get an opportunity. They are trying to attack out of the middle, and establishing that middle will open up the pins. You can go to auprosports.com right now, buy some tickets, come on down, join us here in person in Mesa, Arizona. We have the rest of this weekend. We'll be playing Sunday and Monday, and then two more to go. We're going to crown a champion at the beginning of November. Bring yourself here and see the spectacular level of play in person. Emma. Legacy Park is a beautiful facility. Emma Willis tried to attack that ball down the line. Ball's called long. But Team Hilly didn't like that call. They think it was in. Team Hence all the way back to the lead. That one nearly came down at the last second. It is out. We are tied at 15 here. But remember the overall, 40-34. Hence on the strength of that six-point victory in the first. Hilly serving short. That's going to be near the top of the net. White with another stab. Luke's power inside. You say stab, but Kendall White controlled that ball perfectly, allowing their team to attack back in system fast to Katie Luke's on that left pin. Quality of the dig is so important, setting up the setter for that kill. Look at this dig. Uh, you can go sharp. I also can do that. Allie Linehan right back at you inside the block. Worst away. Tip, Tom Com is there. Bastianelli, oh, look at the back set. Middles doing non-middle things. And Allie Linehan going off the inside hand of Emma Willis, the middle blocker. You see the hand and just changes direction, catches Willow Johnson, that left front defender, by surprise because of the change of direction off the hand. Allie Bastianelli has been after that back set assist for a couple of weeks. cage that chop went into the net I don't think it was touched another tight play Johnson turns it down the line and it's dug long rally gonna be a good shot here for team Hilly overhead Luke's misses down the line Sydney Hilly trying to run that free ball quick to Katie Lukes on the ride, who just turns it too wide. But hence, Team Hens puts a lot of pressure on you defensively. Team Hens from 13 to 6 trailing, now 18 16. <laughs> Tight pass, but Sydney Hilly, great save to Willow Johnson. Team Hilly doesn't want to let this set get away from them. 
Back into serve and go across the back row comes Sasa. Began her career in 1997, has played at 12 teams across Brazil and Poland. A wide professional experience. And won a gold medal in 2008 for Brazil. Oh, yeah, just that. Just that. Just that. You can't forget that detail. Good play. Pass by Vanderweide and then Palazzo down the line. Thread of the middle there. McCage yeah, making be, that a one-on-one. -on -one. Because Team Hens has worked to establish that middle this set. Short serve. Good footwork by none of her. Sasa pops it up perfect in the middle. There's some defense being played by Cuyasa on that line. Was that a miss or was that on purpose? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but it looked like a missed contact off the hand, but drops against Team Hilly. You might want to try and do this more often, actually. Definitely miss. Did the soft slice. This? Well, the spin off the ball. That was the soft slice. Whoa. Nenneviller didn't know what to do with that. That's if you wear like a comic mitt, a Mickey <laughs> Mouse hand, you can cut that one. Uh, it's cut way too sharp and wide. Team Hens takes control, now leading by four. Koyaso at the line. Taylor Bruns in the front row. A little bit of blocking support for Team Hens. Winner, Emma Willis. So Team Hilly finds themselves in a very similar situation. Despite the big lead that they have, they trade by almost the same amount as they did in the first when it comes to 20. Yeah, after leading most of the second set, watch this pass by Brooke Nunneviller. She works to get outside, but delivers that pass right to her setter, Sydney Hilly, who sets Emma Willis perfectly out of the middle. Good point by you. Commit to the pass. Make it perfect. Worry about your footwork afterwards. Don't short step to the ball as McCage there are no short steps in the land of Molly McCage. No, big, powerful driving steps on her approach, and Team Hens has really done the work to establish their middle. It's made a big difference. Long strides only, preferably in camouflage <laughs> if you're Molly McCage. <laughs> Those pants were a fire. By the way, she wore orange shoes and green camouflage. That's yes, a Molly. Huge fashion statement. Yes, love it. The walk ins were today. Athletes bringing their best on a Friday. You can check out. AU Pro Sports across social media and see some of the fits the players were bringing here in Mesa, Arizona. You know you want to do that as Brooke Nunaviller collects another kill. And an All-American in her time in Oregon alongside Willow Johnson. The lefty serves, going deep corner. McCage, and that'll do it again. Molly McCage continues to be outstanding. She's been the number one picked middle in the league Last three weeks now, she has four kills on eight attempts. Watch this pass by Ali Linehan, and then setting up Molly McCage to go behind the setter. She's so dynamic and hits with such fantastic range behind the setter. Vandewina stops Hart for the moment. Hart on the right side, but she is shut down. The block of Team Hens has been a difference maker. Set point again. And we talked about the focus. Any team that Morgan Hens is on, is going to have a defensive focus. She's controlling the backcourt, but the block so important for her team. Runs into block for Nutsara Tomcom again as Hans looks to close this and maintain a large lead headed into the third set. Backslide, Doug. Runs can't quite get there. So it'll be a second opportunity for Team Hens here. They've built themselves a cushion once again, 24-20. We'll be headed to the third set with that overall score in mind, 49-39, a lead of 10 for Hens. They side out here. They carry a double digit into the third, looking for those 100 points available in the third for the overall and for the set. Here they're looking for a plus 40. A set victory. Not yet. Hilly with the stuff block, doing it herself, the captain. Sydney Hilly knew that ball was coming to the left side, and Lindsay Vanderweider kind of hitting in rhythm, but Sydney Hilly all over that ball. Fantastic press defensively.
That ball is down, and this set is over on the third attempt. 25-21, a comeback performance in the set in which they trailed 13-6. to six. It, What an incredible comeback. Look at the last play here. Fantastic pass right to Nitsara Tomkom's hands and a little back dump. Katie Lukes was looking at our hitter, and that ball dropped. Tomcom with a couple of kills in this one. Key Michael, what's going on along the sideline there? I went and grabbed Ali Bastianelli and said, girl, what are you doing? You have, at the time, I think she had five blocks. Now she's up to six, potentially. But her team has eight blocks, and that was the first one for Team Hilly that you just saw there on the other side. So I said, Ali, what are you doing? What's different? She took none of the credit, said, hey, it's all service pressure. Our team are just focusing really hard on that first contact from the serve. And second, my pins are making it really easy. What a teammate. Oh, what a teammate indeed, and what a team. They're breaking the curse so far. They've won the first and the second. They lead in the overall 50 to 40. Does Team Hence the magic number 16 to kill the curse of the women in orange? Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Nike and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. This is AU Fit Check. I've learned to just dress for myself. If you can, keep playing around with your style and what makes you feel good. How I dress is just me like saying like who I am. Fashion is honestly an art form in itself. You gotta try new things. Just being able to express myself, that's something I really love about fashion. My style is more streetwear, kind of sporty, a little girly, a mix of masculine, feminine, playful, and I think that I'm like super playful like as a person. Big pants, small top is definitely my go-to. We are not a low-rise jean babe. Skinny jeans are out. We're done with that. Always gold, like my name. I needed to have like a trademark for season, so I dyed my hair pink. <laughs> You know, us volleyball players, we could dress up.
Big pants, small top. Yes, Molly McCage. Accurate, 100%. And Team Hens, 100% so far. 2 and 0, 19 and 21, but two very different sets as we once again check in with Olympian Key Michael. What happened between sets, Key? Well, I was actually going to talk about how Morgan Hens and Sydney Hilly know each other so well. They played together when they were younger, about 12, 13 years old in the national team. And now they are against each other at the net. So I asked Morgan Hens before the match, hey, what do you need to do to slow down Hilly? You know exactly what she's going to be doing. She said she has a high volleyball IQ. The team's going to feed off her energy. I know she wants to run a tempo. The most important thing is going to be to get her out of system. I think they've been doing a great job at that so far. These are two elite players who grew up in the USA system, the USA high performance, and both of them won national championships at their respective schools. Morgan Hentz at Stanford and Sydney Hilly at Wisconsin. Now across the net from one another, Team Hentz getting the better of it. If you look at Sydney Hilly, number eight. She was only a genetics and genomics major I, at I Wisconsin. Yeah, and yeah. now got a master's in applied biotechnology. Again, Holly, what are you doing with your free time? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't take one of those classes, thank goodness. Tell you what, I'm not doing biotechnology. Sydney Hilly currently looking to dissect Team Hens in the third. Break out the formaldehyde, maybe you can slow down the offense. I mean, they were in command of that second set. Not sure how they let it get away, but Team Hentz just putting so much pressure with their block. Yeah, block at the net, huge roll. And if you get by, you're going to face Morgan Hentz in the back row. They're also in transition, off the block, and out of bounds. Hentz converts point number one of our third set. Kevin Barnett alongside Olympians Holly McPeak and Key Michael. I'll tell you, the block puts so much pressure for you to hit the ball at Morgan Hens, who controlled it. And I love that long stream set all the way across the court to Koyatsa for Team Hens. Next serve goes out, and we're tied at one. Keep an eye on the overall score. It is a 10-point lead for Team Hens entering this third. This is first of two tonight, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. We're back with match number two. Team Edmund taking on Team Rosenthal. And remember, this is just night number one of the weekend, Friday nights, Sunday nights, and Monday nights. We will have a pair of volleyball professional games for you. Bump set outside. Good touch from the block. Bastinelli, good work with the platform. Cover, hands into the middle, Bastinelli working hard and being rewarded. Nutsar Tomcom feeding her middle in transition. Ali Bastinelli, one-on-one. -on -one. She has the advantage going crossbody at that right-back defender. Hence, 3-1. Johnson out of the back row. A lot of kills for Johnson. Efficiency down in that second set. Dig to transition. Sasa starts it. Nunaviller finishes it. Brooke Nunaviller gets that ball pushed all the way out, and she beats Team Hens with speed on that left pin. Hilly back to serve. Three hitters in the front row. There's the X1 once again. This time Nunaviller with the dig off the block. Unable to get a swing, but gets just enough. Little redirect in transition. Wasn't in a good position to take a swing. A look at our leaderboard as it pops in. Hence, 1830 climbing to the top. You see how good Leah Edmond has been, who will feature in the gold jerseys this weekend. Even with this match ongoing, and she hasn't played yet, she's in the number three spot as a net violation ends that rally. Ali Bastinelli looks back and says, was it you? Hennesis? Guilty. Tennis is guilty on that one, number yep. 77 in orange. Chance for Team Hilly. They need to take control of a set, but they also need to finish a set. Missed opportunity in the second. Ball played. It was close. Overhead. But also a tip. Nunaviller cannot spin and win. 
The block again of Team Hens has us at 4-4. Bastianelli and Coyazzo on that one for Team Hens. Bastianelli to the line. Talked to Allie a couple weeks ago. She said, I'm going to take it easy for a couple weeks. I have some trips planned after the conclusion of the season, and then on to more professional volleyball. Not quite sure what the future is going to look like, but it includes a ton of play. That ball outside the antenna, signaling our lines to go all over it. Missed contact from Johnson. In that time, the service pressure, Allie Bastianelli putting some pressure on Team Hilly. They need to clean up that first contact. Ali Bastianelli is mic'd up tonight. You'll probably hear what it's like to play middle and, oh yeah, set the ball perfectly on the left. Hands earlier, this time with the platform. I love it when non-setters are good at setting up that ball in transition. A lot of times teams will attack the setter, make her take that first dig or tip defensively so other players have to step in and the quality of those sets can change a match. Another service error for Team Hens. That ball sailing long. Service errors not only have your team losing one point on the scoreboard, giving one away, actually. They also have you losing points in your own personal points. Service errors are minus eight. McCage. It sounded like she just didn't get enough of it. No, she didn't get her whole hand on that ball, but she is driving hard making herself available behind the set. She's going to have to work with Linehan on the, the soft cut. Oh, I don't know if Linehan could do that again. Yeah, we're going to have a back row violation here. This comes to where you, you have to make a call one way or the other. Yes, yeah, setter was back row. No challenge there. A short, quick discussion. Team Hilly with a one-point lead. Oh, Hence read that all the way, didn't she? That ball had to go on another contact, but it goes early for the kill. Vanda Wida. That looks like a beach play. Right? I mean, just a heads-up play, ready and knowing what's happening on the other side of the court. Short serve, and then Molly McCage fast gets blocked off her head, and Vanda Wida takes that first ball and goes deep to the corner. Good heads up play. At 7-7, seven, seven, 77 serves. And that ball is touched. Well, it looked like it went long, but it did skip off of a woman in an orange jersey. Or a woman on the team Hens. I think Hens got that. She's in a black jersey with an orange number. Okay. But still. Valid. And black shin guards. Yep. <laughs> Backslide. There, McCage got all of that one. I really like when Molly McCage spreads that offense going all the way to the antenna. This gives her more court to attack back into. Good pass here. Nutsara Tomkon delivers that ball high to the antenna where McCage goes to work. Now out of the front row, McCage still there. White underneath it. Do you go back to McCage? Yes, you do. And it's a winner to the corner. Molly McCage collects her seventh kill. She's hitting over 500 in efficiency. And over the last three weeks, she was hitting 414, even better numbers tonight. And you see why she's the number one middle off the board every week. coming up on Tuesday. New team, but we've got a long way to go till we get there as the middle battle has broken out in Mesa. And what a one-handed set by Sydney Hilly. We talked at the beginning of this match about that connection. One hand, heart, Hilly to heart. Johnson to the back row. She will be a part of the offense from there. 
Quick to the outside, Vanderweide. Kill for number 21. As a setter, it's your job, obviously, to look for matchups, but you also want to try and isolate your hitters one on one because the hitter has an advantage, and there, Lindsey Vanderweide gets a one on one versus Sidney Hilly. The cage has been using kind of a hybrid serve. And what, what does that mean? Well, hybrid is a combination between a float and a top spin. Uh, top spin is more of a what you call a spike serve, where you get top spin, but jump float doesn't have the float movement. It has a little spin on it. It's it's a combination of the two serves. Eight ties in this tightly contested third set. That's not going to be enough for Team Hilly, though. They need to go on a run here. They were 10 down coming in. Bastianelli not giving an inch. In Team Hence, has been relentless, especially when Nutsara Tomcom, the setter, is in the front row, running her middles behind. And look at Bastianelli, a little soft touch off the block with the drops. I like the long distance there, too. That heart was all the way traveled to even part of the right front. It really puts a lot of pressure on the middle blocker on the other side of the net. Wait, also, we haven't talked about her on the block. She's been very steady with her positions. Vanderweide, she'll take a cut. Looking for a touch and got it. Really nice, aggressive swing by Lindsey Vanderweide, and you're going to see a challenge by Team Hilly. And they were quite demonstrative immediately, was Team Hilly to issue this captain's challenge of no touch. Look at Hens go across behind her, trying to get that ball to the net. Do you like that kind of swing from an outside hitter in that play? Yeah, I think it go, you have a well-formed block, two hand, four hands, two players, lots of hands to touch that ball. But on that replay, not sure if I saw a touch. I think there's something else here. Watch the net, Holly McPeak. It's moving a little bit. Maybe not. I didn't see it. I'm going to have to go back into the VIP room with Key Michael to get a good look at this one. Yeah, we'll see what Key says. I say no touch. Key Michael, what say you? All right, I think I might have saw a little net touch there. That was my first instinct on those arms. Can I see a little bit of movement? What did you guys, you thought no? I thought no touch. No touch on the ball, but I thought touch on the net right there from Hart. Yeah, I'm looking at the forearms. It's a great shot by our crew. Maybe the net's already moving. Yeah, maybe I'm not. I'm second guessing. I'm I second guessing myself, guys. Well, remember, you have to have evidence to overturn it as well. So if there's nothing, then it's just going to be as called, unless you can clearly see that there was no touch. Well, it has to be definitive. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, the net is moving before, so that not an issue. The captain's challenge issued Originally, a touch called on Team Hilly. So if they do not see a touch in the replay, we will end up reversing the original outcome of that play. Remember, this is our first of two matches. We will not have a reversal, and that crushed Team Hilly just now. Hence, two-point lead. Quickly, Bastianelli back in the middle, and now Team Hens up three. Timeout. I yes. feel the momentum getting away. Yeah, no, timeout immediately. Okay, and it's up to the captain. This is something that players, even as good as setters, aren't necessarily familiar with. This is a stark difference to any other volleyball league. It's on number eight. If she's not going to call a timeout, there is no timeout. I like the short serve. Nutsara Tomcom used the last play. It's very disruptive. They got a free ball out of it. Well, she switches up and goes down the line now, and it creates more offensive pressure. No touch, ball is wide, lead is four for Team Hens. And you're going to get a timeout if you give up a 15th point here, but not even a thought from Team Hilly. This is a rotation where Hilly needs to get the ball to heart. Back to the short serve. 
She does just that, but Bastianelli, she was also listening to you calling the She McPhee. must have been. But I would run Hart to the middle, and then you've got Willow Johnson in the back row who can score. All right, Holly McPeak, you can go talk to them during the timeout or relay it through Key Michael. They need some help on the hilly side. Team Hence, one away from shutting this match out. Positively beautiful sight, the Scenics in this state. For five weeks, we will be here for this entire season, and the Arizona Sports and Entertainment Commission, they're dedicated to attracting champion events like this one to the state of Arizona. They'd love you to know that partnering with them is the smartest thing you can do for your event. Go to azsportsent.com for more information. Bring your event to Arizona and enjoy the beautiful hospitality of this state. Uh, Team Hence, that is the tiniest of bit of hospitality they've shown Team Hilly in this match. They've been relentless. Well, that was a match ball they just missed there. This is their second opportunity to close the 60 points in the overall. They lead 65-51. Team points hugely important. And you can put 60 more of them for Team Hens and everyone over there. Hennesis Coyasso makes it happen, number 77, and that will be plus 60. And Team, team Head celebrates breaking that curse. Finally, That's right. Finally able to get a victory in the orange jerseys. Going back to April of 2022. Leave it to Morgan Hens to do that. Yeah, we wondered what would give. I had my money on the Morgan Hens side of things versus the curse. I know someone rolled some chicken bones out somewhere, but that is over now. That has been ended by number 46. And continued here by Allie Linehan, who's having herself a night. They're looking for the sweep. Now, remember, we still have 40 points available for the set. Hens is looking for a perfect sweep. That's how you climb the leaderboard. And Allie Linehan's playing a really nice role, taking some really nice rips on that left side. Nine kills. Linehan hit over 300. <laughs> Misfire from a reeling Team Hilly. Team Hilly waited too long, in my opinion, to take a timeout and then just gave up too many points in a row. Well, do you call another one now? Do you slow it down? No, but you got to stop the bleeding. They're on an 8-1 run, Team Hence. Uh, the, the flip side of sweeping an entire night is if you are on the losing side of that, you are sliding down the leaderboard in quick fashion. He also tries to snap it, does not get the hand, so point Team Hilly. They are minus six in this set. That's what's left to be decided. Kevin Barnett alongside Holly McPeak with Key Michael on the sidelines. We're taking you through match number one, match number two coming your way, 9.30 Eastern. Team Edmund and Team Rosenthal will take the floor. Linehan, that is what I remember from Kentucky. Allie Stumler. Yeah, Allie Stumler, her maiden name. She had 26 kills in the national final, helping lead her team, Kentucky, to a national title. That was an impressive performance. 
Yeah, played for Craig Skinner, who is again captaining Kentucky through a season. You just saw Kentucky play. I just saw them sweep Tennessee in Tennessee. Big win. Tennessee's an outstanding team. They are. In this 2023 year. Service down the line just long for Ali Bastianelli. Bastianelli, one time Illinois standout. A lot, of big, a lot of Big Ten talent. Morgan Hintz runs onto the court and says, hey, way to go for it. She likes that service pressure, even though Bastianelli missed. Anduida committed to that one. Perfect pass and another kill for Linehan. In Newt Sara, Tom Kong, the setter for Team Hintz is really pushing the pace out to Linehan. She can beat you with her speed. 11 kills for Linehan. Having a performance like the first match of the first weekend. Tom Com goes out again. They've used this sub here as a blocking substitution, bringing in the slightly taller at Stegenroot. Ball too low. Another opportunity for Hens. Yeah, hit him with the heat deep. Tip him short. Tip him into the middle, the donut, the campfire, whatever you want to call it, because the defense plays on the per perimeter of the court. There you see Colazzo come into the middle here, and then another one right back into the middle, defensive players around. Do you have donuts at your campfire? I do not, s'mores only. Okay, okay. No, some people call it a campfire, some people call it the donut, the round part of the court, the meat of the court. I wasn't gonna be opposed, I just wanted to come camping with you. Oh, okay, you know, I don't like donuts. That, that ball looked like it hit the antenna. It did. Right side. Flying in, Coyasso, dug up by White. Easy one for Hens. And Molly McCage, thank you very much. Forget the ball out, she'll take the points. Molly McCage, so dangerous offensively. And Team Hens continues to use her at her strength, going off one foot behind the setter. Eight kills from a cage. Key Michael. Well, I actually went over and asked Emma Willis, hey, how do you shut down Molly McCage? She's been fantastic. Emma kind of gave me blank eyes, but said, well, Molly can hit both ways. When she hits the slide, she's going to go with her approach. So you kind of want to follow what direction she's going. But when it comes to that fastball in the middle, maybe just Kong block, close your eyes and pray. Maybe just Kong block. I like that call. Yeah. Kong block me meaning reach over with one hand and press with your eyes closed. I always found it funny when you get a scouting report on an international player that said he always hits angle. Like, He's on the national team. I'll bet he can hit the line if I take the angle every time. See? Like that. Molly McCage is just shooting carnival ducks and collecting Rasta bananas at this point. But the first contact sets Team Hens up for that play. Good pass right in the setter's hands, and then McCage scoring at will. Molly taking home the huge teddy bear here in match number one. 23-14, closing in on a sweep and a perfect start to the weekend. Team Hens, another nice play defensively. This one in the back row. Tip finds the floor from Sasa. A pretty dominant performance for Team Hens. Saved the very start of the second set. They were able to reverse a 13-6 deficit and win 25-21. Watch this ball in the middle of the court. Brooke Nunneviller came from deep middle back to pick that ball up, allowing her team to score in transition. Johnson from the line. Hey, lots of points to be had here. Some stat points still available. Sasa takes a rip. Hens with another dig, plus five. Vanda Wyatt <laughs> picked up by McCage, who ran into it. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just put another plus eight on the board and an opportunity to close out the match with perfection. What a cover by Molly McCage. She just popped right into her platform. Everything going right for Team Heads. Tough serve from McCage. Off balance. Is this it? Taylor Burns taking her, takes the kill. Fun yep, to, you fun, forget she's a lefty. Yeah, fun to watch a left-handed setter in the front row attacking that ball. And look at the celebration from Team Hence 
breaking that curse. The women in orange are victorious for the first time in a long time. Watch this dig here. Linehan puts it right in her setter's hands and Bruns Tegenroot attacks on two. That's the benefit of having that left-hand setter in the front row. A lot of things going right for Team Hens, including the ace game. And for every ace, Athletes Unlimited Volleyball sees in a season, Aspiration will plant 10 trees. It is the Aspiration Aces program. We had 700 trees committed coming into this week. We added a few tonight. I love it. Watch the dribbler. Team Hilly had things going in that second set, but could not finish. Five total aces on the evening. That means 50 more trees on your planet Earth. That's right, everybody. It's your planet collectively. And Key Michaels on the sideline with Ali Bastianelli. What a night for the 5-5. Five -five. Ali, fantastic night for you and all of the orange team. You broke the curse. We did. You know, we just had to rebrand ourselves as the green teams, and it worked. <laughs> but yeah, there's more to it. I think we did a great job serving tough, getting them out of system. And yeah, we just stayed together through it all. Well, I know that Morgan Hens chose as her second and third pick two middle blockers between you and Molly. Some might question that decision, but what do you say to that? I mean, I say draft middles high, and I think Molly and I kind of talked at the beginning of the week. We work really well together, um, paired as middles. Like, she likes to be M1. I've been comfortable in M2, and I think it showed tonight. And you said you're super comfortable with Nutsara as well. Why is that? Well, this is our seventh week in total together between our last two seasons, so I think our connection's only getting stronger. Well, fantastic play. 12 kills, 50% in attack, and six blocks for Ali Bastianelli. Team Orange Curse is officially over. Thank you. Thank you. Team Hence was impressive. Both middle blockers defensively and offensively were a factor. They were able to get them going in transition, and that just puts way too much pressure on their opponents. Yeah, what's it like to play middle in a match in which you're playing well and winning it? Well, let's hear. Here's Ali Bastianelli mic'd up. Trying to get the inside scoop. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Here we go. Let's string together some points here. Uh, hey, protect your hands against Katie. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. Man, oh man. What a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> let's not do that again. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can feel the passion and fire from Ali Bastianelli. What a performance tonight with Team Heads. Bastianelli, six kills, six blocks. An all around outstanding performance by number 55 and Team Hens. Linehan, Ali Linehan collects 12 kills. Lindsey Vandewijde, nine kills. We wondered where the offense would come from. It came from all over, along with some outstanding defense at the net. Remember, this is just the first of two on the evening. We're going to be back at 9.30 Eastern. Edmund taking on Rosenthal. For now, it's 75-55. Team Hens, a dominant 180 team points. And the best way to start the weekend.